Hello everyone, this is Grimo Kind, and for my 100 subscribers special, I've decided to do something that's been requested of me uh, since I started doing the Vroid Studio speed sculpts, and that is a Vroid Studio tutorial. Um, I apologize for like bad microphone quality or any background noise. Uh, I there's a reason why I don't do voiceover videos very often, and it is 100% because I don't have any any part of a good setup, but. I think I have enough to, you know, make a video. So, when you open up Vroid Studio, you won't see this screen, actually. You'll see a different screen that will show you on the top a, um... Oh, I hope my recording software is showing my mouse. <laughs> um, because I'm gesturing to things. But, uh, it will show you some default models, uh, a plus button where you can make new ones, and then any of your own models, and I skip past that because I have a lot of uh, bad unfinished models that I'm not showing you guys because I'm embarrassed. Um, so today I'm going to just uh, walk you guys through some of the basic features of Vroid Studio, and um, and I, uh, we're also going to make a character. We're going to be making um, Sarah Chiduin from uh, the uh, indie sort of escape game style puzzle game, uh, Your Turn to Die. Um, the art program we're using is Clip Studio Paint, which is honestly, in my opinion, better than like any of the other big options like Psy or Photoshop, but it is like Photoshop, it is it does cost money. Um, I got it as like a one-time purchase. I don't know uh, if it is in a subscription service now. Uh, I don't know nothing. I'm just an artist who sits around and does stuff. But, let's jump right into it. Um, today, or maybe technically yesterday, I don't know, it's just something I woke up to. Um, Vigoroid Studio actually got a big update to the clothing options, so I figured no time like the present. So, now, here's the, here's the basic editor and all the stuff you're going to be poking around in. And what I'm using for this is just a uh, Wacom, Wacom, whatever, tablet. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can navigate it with any kind of, like, mouse. Uh, I was not able to navigate it with a trackpad. Um, but since I've only ever used my tablet, I will tell you guys how to navigate with a tablet. Um, essentially, you, like, just clicking and dragging doesn't do anything. Um, if you hold down shift, you move the model up and down. If you scroll the scroll wheel, you zoom in and out. And, um... I don't know what this would translate to on a mouse, but if you hold the button on your tablet pen and kind of hover it over your tablet, you can rotate it, which is a very important tool, um, which I haven't been able to replicate that effect with the trackpad, which is why I insist you use a mouse or a tablet. Now, uh, before we get started making the character, I'm going to walk you guys through the things you can edit. Um, if you see, like, zoom in on her face, her face editor. If you see, like, you have a lot of these um, sliders here where you can, like, edit facial features and stuff like that. Um, a lot of the character designs I work with for my uh, speed sculpt videos and other models I do, uh, their designs are more focused around their outfits, not as much on their face, like their face structure. Which is kind of a shame. I, I need to work on that a little more. So I don't usually play with the sliders as much, but I, I do sometimes on my robot video. The robot girl. I gave her like a very round face. Same with the the moth girl video. Um, and so you can customize a lot of things like the shape of her eyes or his eyes. There are male models as you saw. Um, the shape of her nose, mouth, ears, face shape. Give her like rounder cheeks. And um, face line position. This makes it go out, and then this slider makes it go in. And I think this is kind of an odd setup, like, what would make more sense is, like, have it in the middle, and then this way makes it smaller, and this way makes it bigger, but they have separate, um, separate sliders for, uh, things getting larger and things getting smaller, which is an interesting sort of thing. And yes, you can put them both to maximum, and I- oops. And, uh... It just kind of puts them back to normal. I would 
it would have been hilarious if it like causes some sort of paradox, but no, it's just, it just makes it go back to normal. <laughs> All right, the hair editor. Um, the hair editor is uh, both easy and impossible to use. Um, uh, I will just do a little basic thing here. Uh, here you can edit. This is the sort of hair mesh when you you draw hair onto the model, like you would yeah like that like you would draw anything but it will automatically sort of stick to this mesh that you make and there are a lot of points of manipulation for this mesh and if you're really patient you can manipulate this mesh to do a lot of things like um, I once made a model that uh, I might show on screen if I'm not lazy where I was able to stretch out the hair mesh and I made wings out of the hair which looks cool until it's in motion <laughs> Um, just one quick tip, you can use the hair to make some simple, like, accessories, things like that, like, um, my, when my one, like, different style model with the pink hair, I gave her a, uh, spiked collar made out of hair, technically, and also the robot girl, she had her headphone processor motor things that anime robot girls have for some reason, uh, I made those out of hair, um, but just a warning, if it's hair, it will move along with the head. So, um, for example, if you go to this, this is where you can sort of test like how things move because you can actually put like um, points of movement in the hair so it can like bounce, and you can also pose it. And um, I remember one time I made a character of mine who wore a like really ill-fitting tie, and I made that out of hair, and it looked great until. I wanted to pose him and just like take some cool like rendered shots and the tie moved with his head and would like clip into his chest and disappear which wasn't really ideal um not exactly what I wanted and also I had a girl uh the moth girl um doesn't look great in motion even because one like she turns her head and her wings and her like neck rough will move with her and doesn't quite look right so that's, that's one thing, Vroid Studio is a very powerful tool, but it is still somewhat limited in some ways. Like, it just got a huge update of, like, clothing options and things like that, but you, they're still missing some features. So, I meant to mention this earlier, but I recommend watching this video through before you decide to make your own model. Uh, so you can actually, because there are some characters that probably are not suited to be made in Vroid Studio. And, um, like, just using uh, Your Turn to Die as an example, characters like Joe and Sara would be very easy to make, um, as, like, they, um, they have, like, very usual anime school kid outfits. Uh, meanwhile, a character that really breaks models like, um, like Kitaro or, uh, or now Reiko would be extremely difficult to make and uh, might like uh, might require the use of an outside program i have tried like editing models that i've made in like blender um mixed success because i'm not very good with blender blender is hard um but but yeah so uh but Beaverwood is is regularly getting updates like i said it just updated from like 6.4 to 7.1 i added a bunch of stuff um, and they are constantly teasing more updates and things like that, so it will hopefully become a very powerful program in time, but for now it is still a little limited. Now let's go to the body editor. Now, the body editor is very important because something I completely forgot to show you guys is for every part you pick, everything up here, there's a texture editor. And let me just show you guys some of the face textures, because um, those are important. Um, not the tongue. I don't know if you guys are going to be working on tongues. You know, each to their own, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, like the whites of the eyes, you can edit those. Like with the moth girl, I made them black, so her eyes were like inverted. Um, this is sort of like the, uh, the line to her eyes. I edited that on the um, pink girl that I made because I was going for like a very... Like, I was going for the aesthetic of a low-poly model, even though, obviously, I can't edit. Oh, sorry, I keep burping. 
I can't really edit how many polygons are in this model, but I went for kind of that simplistic style, so I changed these to be like normal winged eyeliner. Um, oh, and also for all the texture editors, there is a like, there is a built-in sort of like drawing thing. It is not terrible, but it is very unimpressive. Um, I've never really been satisfied with it whenever I tried to use it. Um, the blur tool, at least for me, has never worked. I mean, let's see, did the update fix it? Nope, never worked for me. I don't know if it's just my computer, but either way, um, you can edit eyebrows, uh, yeah, I, um, the one good thing for this, for this pro, like the in art thing, is you can draw on the model. I don't know if it works for the eyebrows, because it's kind of a, there we go, yeah. Um, which is good for like, if you're not great at knowing how a 2D uh, shape, or a 2D like texture drawing fits onto the model, you can kind of sketch onto the model like the things you want. Like I had a character with a tattoo that wrapped around his arm and I had to sketch that onto the model because I wasn't sure like how I would do the wrapping effect. Um, but yeah, you can affect eye color. Now I recommend, because um, I don't really like the in editor that much, you can right click, export, and uh, what I generally do is, oops, you guys are seeing secret stuff of mine. Um, let me go to my modeling folder, my models. See, I've got folders here for all the models that I've made. See, there's the moth girl, um, there's Ragnar, the horns guy, uh, Yumi is the robot. Um, but you see, I can just use Vera to build me in. Uh, so I make a folder, and I will just put all my stuff in there. I'm pretty sure all things will export with the name Layer, which is not really very convenient, so I will usually say, like, irises, or I could just do eyes, I'm not editing the, um, the whites of her eyes, but whatever. Um, you can also edit the skin of the face, you do that separately from the skin of the rest of the body. Um, I don't edit that super often, unless my character has a really different skin tone, um, which a few of my characters do have. Uh, and, um, you can also do that effect to edit, like, you can you can paint and do almost, like, makeup contours on the face to make an effect of, um, of just a shape to the face that the other editor will not allow, like, for Ragnar, the guy with the horns, he has a very, like, elongated and gaunt face, like, he's half, like, he looks like he's half starved, even though he's not, so, and, but the face editor only let me do so much, so I export his face, and I sort of, like, put shading under the cheekbones, to achieve that effect. So yeah, those are the texture editors. The hair has a texture editor too. Um, what I find best is to take the hair texture, keep like the texture itself, but instead of it being white and gray, like take it and color it, like just do like a layer effect and color it the way, like just make it look a little nicer because as it is, um, Anyone who is good with like art and uh, and such will tell you that shading with pure black is not very good because it makes your colors look kind of murky. And um, so yeah, you should color your texture. I'll, I'll show you guys how to once we work on Sarah. Then there's the clothing editor, which just got a huge update. Um, we're gonna be using the default stuff mostly because Sarah has. Um, I feel like I'm switching between Sarah and Sarah. She has kind of a basic school uniform look. The only thing we really need to add is the um, like collar of her jacket, I think is what you call it. But otherwise, everything else seems to be kind of natively supported in uh, in Vivroid, because Vivroid is good with school uniforms. So what you can do is you can pick between a bunch of different tops. Um, my new favorite is the little hoodie. I no longer have to make hoodies myself out of the shirts very happy about that. Um, God, it's adorable because it's like so baggy. <laughs> um, we're going to be working with, um, oops, oops, 
No, you can't guys you guys can't see behind the curtain. Um see she has a long sleeve uniform. So that is what we will be giving her. A uniform uniform dress, long sleeve. And um the bottom she does wear a skirt. Uh what are her shoes like? She would just be normal loafers. So she'll just stick with those. And accessories, there aren't any accessories just yet besides a uniform ribbon or a uniform tie. Sarah has a tie, so we'll be going with that. Um, the, the, um, the tie is very convenient to edit because it, um, it has its own texture, so I can just kind of slap like a green checkered texture on it and be done with it there. Not the neatest way to do it, but who's gonna really look closely at a tie to, like, judge me? <laughs> Alright, and then the general editor is, um, is a little different than the other editors. This is more for, like, the, like, how you want your model to look inside the editor. Like, what kind of lighting do you want to see it in and stuff like that. I honestly gen generally turn these settings very low because I find this kind of, like, halo light around the outlines be very distracting while I work. Um, eye excursion, I don't know what that is. I'm just gonna be very, very real in, in the skillies tonight. <laughs> um, I don't know what that is. I'm just, I'm, listen, I'm doing my best over here. But, um, but clearly it's not important because I've never used it and I've been fine. Don't, don't take my word for it there. It might actually be very useful. Um, experiment with things. If I don't show you how to do something, go try it for yourself. Be, be independent. Alright, so now that I've uh, spent way too long walking you guys through the program, uh, let's, let's get started on the model. <laughs> 